Welcome to the AI Chat Podcast. I'm your host, Jaden Schaefer. Every day I break down AI news, interview guests, and explain the implications of AI in your life and business. Make sure that you go to AIbox.ai, link in the show notes, to join the waitlist for our new AI platform. We're going to be launching an incredible platform that allows you to build anything you want with workflows um, in AI. So you're able to chain together chat GPT and image generators and audio generators to make really powerful apps for your organization, or you can host them on our marketplace and actually generate royalties from them. So make sure to go to AIbox.ai and join the waitlist. In addition, if you like the podcast, if you could do me a massive favor and please leave us a review on Apple or Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcast. This helps me be able to get better guests on here as they check the reviews to see how you guys are liking it. So if you could please do that, I would really, really appreciate it. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for Podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer, and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts, and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for Podcast app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. Today on the podcast, we're going to be talking about a recent acquisition that OpenAI has made, leaving us wonder, you know, why did they acquire this company? Was this something they were unable to do before? Was this something they wanted to scale up really quickly? We're going to be talking about that. In addition, we want to talk about the fact that it looks like ChatGPT may be winning over Stack Overflow, and we're going to be diving into that as well. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So OpenAI, of course, famous for ChatGPT, um, recently announced that it is acquiring Global Illuminations. This is a New York-based startup that essentially uses AI to craft creative tools, digital experiences, and infrastructure. The acquisition is the first for OpenAI in approximately seven years. This is a really big deal, right? This is the first company they've actually acquired. And details regarding the transaction terms are still undisclosed. We don't know exactly how much this was you know, acquired for. But in a statement on their blog, OpenAI said, quote, the entire team has joined OpenAI to work on our core products, including ChatGPT. Global Illumination is the brainchild of founders Thomas Dimson, Taylor Gordon, and Joey Flynn, and it has um, it has engaged in a whole bunch of projects since 2021, um, when it was first created, and notably, the venture received support from prominent VC firms such as Paradigm, Benchmarks, and Slow. So, impressively, the minds behind Global Illumination had earlier played pivotal roles in product design and development at tech giants like Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Google, Pixar, and Riot Games. So, while serving as the Director of Engineering at Instagram, Dimson significantly contributed to enhancing the platform's discovery algorithm, and his contributions at Instagram include the initiative of teams focusing on the Explore tab, Feed, um, and Stories ranking. So, uh, he also worked on IGTV and a couple other things, right? So, obviously, he's very well ingrained in tech and did a lot of big moves in some big products on some big platforms. So then that begs the question, right? What is, you know, what is Global Illuminations actually going to do? So one of the latest offerings from them is actually um, Biomes, which is an open source sandbox, MMORPG. It's reminiscent of Minecraft, but crafted from web platforms. So the game's future remains really um, ambiguous. And given the recent acquisition, it's possible that Global Illuminations endeavors under OpenAI's umbrella might, you know, veer away from entertainment focused projects and more towards other things. So though OpenAI has previously steered clear of acquisitions, I think the AI giant right now, um, they have a lot of money in venture capital from, you know, Microsoft and other VCs. And so they have been proactively um, funding and offering grants to different AI firms over the years. And I think evidently AI is, you know, strategically positioning itself for a significant commercial breakthrough. So d- despite GPT-4's um, worldwide usage right now, I think OpenAI reportedly funneled over $540 million into development last year. Um, so it's definitely spending very, very heavily to improve its core products. I think the, Im- the investment also kind of encompassed the strategic hiring of top talent from competitors like Google, which, you know, obviously is not going to be super cheap. And in addition, while OpenAI's revenue touched $30 million um, in the year before, CEO Sam Altman has reportedly informed stakeholders 
about ambitious plans aiming to scale this figure to 200 million in the current year and envisioning a really robust $1 billion the following year, which could be impressive, but in order to pull this off, they're definitely going to need a lot more help. Um, and it would appear that this new company they've acquired is going to help them do just that. On to another piece of news, the fact that it would appear that ChatGPT is beating Stack Overflow. So if anyone remembers where this was at the beginning of the year, Stack Overflow is the website that developers use to post questions and get responses on how to uh, do code projects, how to how to develop different types of code, get code snippets. Um, now, the problem is Stack Overflow saw a massive decline in traffic after ChatGPT launched when people realized they could ask ChatGPT uh, for questions about coding to write code and all sorts of things. Uh, Stack Overflow took a massive hit in recent uh, just recently Stack Overflow has made a lot of changes to its settings saying that they are going to charge people um, to to essentially use their data if they're going to train models because I believe Chad GBT like trained with using Stack Overflow data which is you know pretty tricky for Stack Overflow and in addition I believe they're training their own AI model um, for developers but with all of that underway and all those announcements, it would appear in the you know the today, in today's term that ChatGPT may still be winning. So even with all of the super experienced data that Stack Overflow has, um, and I think it still is a a really big tool. Data from an analytics firm in May said that the platform's traffic declined on average six percent in every month of the year, um, culminating to seventeen percent. Uh, a 17% drop by April, right? So we're just seeing month over month, Stack Overflow's traffic is getting cut down um, due to ChatGPT. So a study at Purdue University titled Who Answers to Be Better? An in-depth analysis of ChatGPT and Stack Overflow answers to software engineering's questions. It's kind of a long title. But in any case, the study suggests that um, they found a concerning trend. A notable chunk of ChatGPT's answers to coding-related queries were either misleading or downright false. However, in a comparison test, 40% of participants favored ChatGPT's responses and uh, were swayed by its really good response style. So of 512 ChatGPT responses analyzed, a whopping 52% were flagged as incorrect, and alarmingly, 77% of those preferred by participants were inaccurate. So despite really glaring inaccuracies in ChatGPT's answers, a subset of participants still lean towards them over Stack Overflow um, and Stack Overflow's responses. So Samina Kabir is the co-author of the study, said, shed some light on this saying, quote, participants overlooked the inaccuracies when they found ChatGPT's responses insightful. Its confidence, articulate delivery style, even, its, um, even if misleading fosters user trust. So according to Kabir, the blend of um, this language really makes people like it. So while language models like ChatGPT promise really quick answers, um, they are not always 100% accurate. So Stack Overflow recognizes these pitfalls and has prohibited ChatGPT um, derived responses, right? You can't, you can't ask coding questions on ChatGPT and post them on Stack Overflow. So a lot of people are doing that right at the beginning of ChatGPT. And I think that this is really interesting, right? Humans actually prefer it. Now, the other thing, the other caveat I will say is a lot of times uh, when you hear these kind of articles or these kind of studies and they're like, oh my gosh, 52% of the coding responses were inaccurate. That might be true, right? If someone says, and also let's all define inaccurate, but you might say like, hey, code me something that does X, Y, and Z. It spits out some code. Now, a respondent might say, okay, this looks great pop it into wherever they're uh, developing, and then they're going to go debug it. They're going to fix whatever is wrong. If you're kind of a semi-experienced developer, you're like, I just need something to throw something together for me real quick. I know it's going to be like referencing libraries that don't exist, whatever. I can go fix those and change those. Um, and Stack Overflow might be more cleaner code that you could instantly copy and paste, but perhaps it's harder to find uh, the result on Stack Overflow. I'm not 100% sure, but what I will say is on the, on the projects I'm currently working on, my developers literally say they cannot live without GPT-4 um, and that they use it every day. So, and also that they have like went away from Stack Overflow a lot. So like I, I see this in real time playing out across real companies. Um, and I do think that, you know, while a lot of these studies are going to be saying like, so it's funny because the, the like takeaway from the study is like chat GPT is winning. People prefer it. Um, and then everyone's like, yeah, but it's like less accurate than Stack Overflow. 
it's like at the same time, um, sometimes all it needs is a few tweaks to what ChatGPT is coming up with, and it can come up with it a lot faster, and it can do a lot bigger components than Stack Overflow. So I think it does have a lot of benefits, and I don't think people should get. I think inevitably we're going to get less caught up about like, oh, it has like errors and be like, oh my gosh, it wrote me like an entire page of code instead of like two snippets that were perfect from Stack Overflow. The entire page needed a couple tweaks. So while well, you could say it was an inaccurate entire page, in two seconds it wrote an entire page that I would have had to piece together with a bunch of different things from Stack Overflow. So there are some pros and cons um, to it, but I definitely know a lot of developers that can't live without it. And so because of that, I think that... Um, ChatGPT is only going to get better. And I think Stack Overflow really needs to um, up its game. It needs to get its AI assistant out there ASAP and scale it because that is really where the space has gone. I think right off the bat, uh, their biggest move as soon as they felt threatened by ChatGPT was to replicate it for, with their own code base. Um, it feels like they just recently started doing that. And so, I mean, for their sakes, I hope that uh, they get it done sooner than later. But it's going to be an interesting space to follow and see if once they do create something on um, which they've announced they will, if they're able to actually compete against ChatGPT or if the user, the brand name's so big and everyone is already using that by that point. So definitely an area to follow in the future. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. That's the sound of switching your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling. Harness the best converting checkout and same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Stop leaving sales on the table. Discover why millions trust Shopify to build, grow, and run their business. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech23. Thank you for listening to the AI Chat Podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, I'd appreciate it if you rate me wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you're looking for an innovative group of AI enthusiasts, make sure you check out our Discord channel and also our Facebook community. It's obviously a lot more interactive than a podcast where we can actually share software tools, prompts that we're using in everyday AI. I'll leave a link for those in the description below.